Hello, good evening and uh, welcome. Now, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to all the viewers who somehow nominated myself and this program to be you know, part of the best current affairs show on TV. Now, it's not only good to just nominate us, uh, it's also fair that to vote for us. So what you need to do is uh, text RTPKWAW to 1446. RTPKWAW to 1446. And the more you text, and the more likely we are to win, and then I can come here and gloat and give you all the thanks. And also, uh, Nana Ukrukata, the fifth of uh, Akrade, says, Thank you very much. All those who came to support the Abedru Festival, I was there myself, and tradition was in full display. So, Nana Ukrukata says, Thank you. And on all behalf of all the people of Akrade. But today, the issue is back on the table again, and it's genetically modified foods. Is man playing God, or is it pure, simple common sense? The world is growing. The population is set to hit 9 billion in, what, 2050, and they must be fed. Can they be fed through the conventional methods? But then here we are in Ghana, what, cultivating just about 16% of our fertile land. Have we even got the moral right to bring this discussion on the table? Why don't we just cultivate the rest of the land? But hey, it's here with us. Some are saying some seeds should be genetically modified so they are more weather resistant and then we can feed more mouths and people don't go to bed hungry. Either way, some say yes and others say no. When I come back, I will introduce my guest. My name is Nana Sakwa and this is PM Express. Stay tuned. Hello and uh, welcome back to the show. And as I said, the issue is back on the table again. And they said, you are what you eat. And indeed, what are you eating? Genetically modified foods. What, six-legged chickens, uh, cows with two heads, pigs with three heads, you know, pigs with 15 feet because you like the feet. Why not? Give the fig, pig <laughs> plenty of feet and then the farmer can make more money instead of just the proverbial four. But then one will say, are you playing God? Is it common sense or are we interfering with nature? With me in the studio to discuss this matter. From my extreme left is uh, Bright Edward Kujo Dimoji, who is a member of parliament for Botiano English Yamanfro and a member of the Greek Select Committee in parliament. Now, uh, he's flexible. He is flexible. And then with my immediate left is Bernard Guri, Executive Director, Center for Indigenous Knowledge and uh, Organizational Development, who is against the introduction of GM Foods. Yeah. Joining us on the phone will be Professor Walter Sando, and uh, he is in support of GM Foods. I don't know where I am yet, but I'm sure by the time the show ends, one of them would have swayed me as to whether I eat it, not eat it, or I'm flexible. Now, I'll start with you, uh, Brian. Why, why aren't you worried, you know, that somebody, you know, there's corn since Adam and Abraham, and then all of a sudden somebody decides to do something with your corn? Are you not worried? <coughs> yeah. You know, I am not worried at all. In a sense that, you know, the word genetically modified foods are basically a scientific modernization to achieve certain purposes. And, you know, the world is growing, and as the world is growing, knowledge is also growing. Mm -hmm. And it is important that we grow with knowledge. I'm a very conservative person. Mm -hmm. But in, in this area of GM, even with food? Yes, very conservative in terms of uh, trying to adopt new ideas. But in the area of GM, it's just an issue of trying to alteration of a gene, a gene to, or a DNA, so that you can be able to get something that will be new from, from the, the way the natural way of life goes. And you ask yourself, how come these ideas generate from? And I believe that scientific ideas or research comes from God. Human beings, <laughs> we are made of God. So for somebody to come with an idea, 
I don't think it just came out from the blue. That's why I believe that in looking at this issue of GM, we should look at the advantages that are involved. The whole world is growing. We are talking about food security. Is that the solution? So we, just, we should just not be looking at the, the, the difficulties we are having with it, but we should look at how is it going to solve the problems of the future. Right, this is not an excuse. There's a land in abundance. There is land in abundance the world over. I mean, why would you want to uh, trick or adopt something? Why don't you just plant on the available land that there is in its natural form? Yes. Uh, you know, it is not just about planting, but it's also about, one, if currently as we speak, uh, we use all kind of minerals. Let's, for instance, fertilizers. <laughs> We use pesticides, we use herbicides, mm -hmm. we use all kind of things in production of agriculture. Why didn't we say that we don't have to use them and that we have a lot of abundant resources and that we should use them? But because the, the application of mineral fertilizer is scientific innovation and it's true research. So if you are using a fertilizer, if you are using a pesticide, if you are using agrochemicals, if you are using even breeding, it's a, it's a scientific method. You understand me? So. That's why I'm saying that, to just put it in a blanket perspective, to say that GM is very bad, I disagree. Let's look at the merit and the merit. Because, honestly speaking, I have not seen any concrete research saying that the 20 years of uh, GM food introduction, uh, there has been a change in, in terms of, for instance, the, the GM food that is being produced for, from soya. In America, and then in term for beans, for tolerance to herbicides, I've not seen anybody says that animals that consume this particular show some difference in terms of their eggs, in terms of their breeds, and all that. There are no critical research work. That's why I'm saying that we should just not be looking at the demerits, because there's no scientific research that does not come with its risk. There will definitely be some level of risk, but how are we taking advantage of its uh, introduction or its importance. So, clearly, but if, the, if the concept, mm -hmm. if we agree that it's going to increase productivity, if we agree that it's going to reduce the reduction in the use of mineral fertilizers in the world, because you know the application of mineral fertilizers, it has its own consequences. If we agree that this thing is going to ensure that uh, we're going to have genes or crops that can resist drought, and it's true that if you, if you take Ghana, for instance, mm -hmm. we don't have irrigable lands or irrigation infrastructure. We don't have it. And we are depending on... Uh, so which is, which, <coughs> uh, two questions before I, I bring uh, Bernard in. Number one, which is better? Do we do more irrigation or do we scientifically modify plants? And where do we stop once we start? Yes, I'm, I'm saying that there are certain areas that we cannot do away with GM. Like? But, for instance, is it the, in, the, in the area of industrial chemical production? No, I don't get you, but break it down for You me. know, GM is not only into food crops production. I know, soya and uh, stuff. Uh, yeah. Yes. So I'm saying that there's certain areas... No, but if you do that, then the, the, the bee will land on that thing and then go and land on somebody's organic farm and then you know, modify that farm. Yes, sure, of course. That's what I'm saying that, for me, I believe strongly that the, even though for the past 20, so, 20 so, 30 years... So my two questions before I break right yes. here. Number one, uh, should we go into irrigation? I mean, a champion, they, they massively started doing this irrigation. And number two, uh, where do we stop? Yes, I, for me, I, as I said, irrigation is very important. But irrigation alone is not solving only irrigation pr problem alone. We're talking about the issue of the usage of even mineral fertilizers. We're talking about a drastic reduction in the usage of mineral fertilizers. We're talking mm -hmm. about drought-resistant uh, crops. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So there are other, a lot of advantages in the production, in the GM foods that we're talking about. So I'm saying that, yes, and, and then where if do we, we have stop? the resources. And then where do we stop? If we have the resources, if we have the resources mm -hmm. to go into irrigation, if we have the resources to be able to produce those food in abundance to feed human beings, then we don't have, nobody will have a choice. 
to even go to the, or, the original ones. But the difficulty is that we are not being able to produce enough to feed the, national, the, the population. That's why come the new ideas are coming up to be able to feed the population. So if generally, if you Once have, we start with corn and beans, do we stop there or should we try rice and then uh, try mangoes and papo? Where, where would we stop? We, we, we must continue to develop. We must come out with new ideas. Right. Irrigation is not enough. The world is growing. We don't have the means. Let us, you know, adjust these things a bit and, you know, so that corn will grow, grow during Hamatan season and tomatoes will survive in the swamp. Why, why, why not? Why are you against it? Well, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> for me, I think um, the whole idea that um, we don't have enough food, and that is why we have to look for uh, scientific methods. It's, um, it's misleading. Because first of all, if you look at Ghana, there are times when a report of um, tomatoes getting rotten in some parts of Ghana. We've heard of rice piled up somewhere in Navrongo. We've heard of yam that is piled up somewhere. The problem is how do we distribute this that everybody has access? I think that's the primary problem we have. Is that what we are looking at? Have we finished solving those problems? And are we going to genetical modification? Because mod genetical modification for me is a shortcut. And for me, the whole idea of genetical modification is not about feeding people. It's to satisfy global capitalism. It's about profit. Because there's no proof that our seed is not able to yield enough. Why do you want to go and change our seeds when we haven't exhausted the, the, the conventional way of selecting seeds? Our farmers have done this for centuries. This is science that has been handed over centuries, and we are very sure about it. We know that if you plant this food, this is how it's going to behave. If I eat it, this is what will happen. Now, this so-called science, genetical, uh, uh, um, modified. Uh, genetically modified seeds, mm -hmm. this is why it is artificial. When we take a seed and they shoot a gene into it, and then that gene goes to modify. It sound very scary when you say they it, shoot. It, it, <laughs> that's what they do. It's, it's, a, it's a like gun, and it goes to modify the whole thing and produces something else we call food. Mm -hmm. But who knows what's going to happen? Because for me, it's all immature science. It's not mature enough even compared to traditional science. It's immature in the sense that. This is something that's not even after 50 years. When did they start genetic engineering? And now this modified seed, maybe it's food. I don't have know, but haven't uh, farmers always done it where they put like a, a mango and, 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 the, yeah. and the orange together and then it grows and then you have mango and oranges on the tree? Or is there a modern science? That know. is exactly what I'm explaining. Okay. They've done this. Well, they call that that's not genetic modification. Because it's just um, it's breeding. Breeding. Just I mean, breeding. There are different types of breeding. But wouldn't the genes that's, that's you know, can, intertwine? Wouldn't that they? Can, no, it's not genetic. It's, it's, can, it's just the cells that can be able to combine. Mm -hmm. But genetic uh, engineering is actually genes that you play with mm -hmm. and modify it. And mm -hmm. the gene is what determines where your nose is, where your ear is. So this gene then changes the food in such a way that it behaves in a certain way. For example, you stop of water, uh, what, taking up less water. Or, mm -hmm. for example, there's even a, 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 an example where they are thinking of um, taking the gene from a spider and putting it in a goat. Whether this goat will produce milk, that can have the potential to, pro to produce the, the spider's um, silk, okay. which they can use for industry. It is not dangerous. Spider gene in a goat. The same way, even our Muslim brothers, I want to warn them, because they could take a gene from a pig and put it in maize. Just to get some gene, some, some trait in that, in that seed. Mm -hmm. And this is what they are doing. Which for me is absolutely unnecessary. If it is about producing food, we have many ways of doing right, it. But with, with the conventional way, at, at you get to a point where, because land is a limited resource. Yes. So you will get to a point where you need to get maximum yield from a limited uh, resource of land. Yes. Even though we are not there yet, should we shelve uh, this idea and then use it later or you are saying never? As I'm saying, I'm not against genetic engineering. It's mm -hmm. science and we need to settle for our scientific curiosity. Mm -hmm. But this is something that should take a long time. That's why Europe has banned it. You don't have it in Europe. It's not, it's not because they're not doing genetic engineering there. But they need to test this thing over a long period to ensure that it doesn't have any negative effects in the end. 
before you can introduce it to human beings. And that's what we are talking about. Because, um, 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 uh, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> You're talking about Europe banning it? Eh? Yes, mm -hmm. Europe has banned it. So what we are saying is that this science is, is it needs a longer period. Mm -hmm. It hasn't matured enough. It ha we haven't tested it enough to prove. In fact, there are tests now that are going on with rats. Fine. Because a rat has a short life period, maybe 10 days, it dies off. And so the effect of genetically modified will show much quicker. We human beings take maybe even 100 years to die. And so the effect takes a much longer time. And I've shown that rats that are fed to genetically modified feed have some negative effects. For example, some of them lose their fertility. Some of them develop cancers. They develop all kinds of diseases, allergies. And in fact, in human beings now, we develop all kinds of allergies. You go to the U.S. where they have eaten this for a long time. The, the level of allergy has re, re, uh, increased to a very substantial level. But, but there's so many documentation that goes to say that, no, it's safe, just go ahead and eat it. There are two categories of scientists who are genetic engineers. Mm -hmm. There are those who are paid by corporate companies who are producing genetically modified seeds like mm -hmm. Monsanto and those big guys. Mm -hmm. There are the other group of scientists who are just scientists for the sake of science, mm -hmm. who want to produce science. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the U.S., I was there last week, I should have brought to you the books that they've done, where there's a big tug of war between the two groups of scientists, where those paid by corporate companies say, okay, we have tested it, nobody else should test it, send it to the market. The other scientists say, no, we, there, are, there, are, there are different ways in which you can test it. And when they use their own methods, they find that there are problems with genetically modified food. It's proof. Let me, let me bring Bernard in here because you obviously are sat in a committee of parliament and you're discussing a Greek and the Europeans are banded. So why aren't we worried? Why are we saying, well, if it's will feed it's okay? Yes. Uh, <coughs> I'm not aware of it, but I know that... Uh, I know yes. Iceland, uh, the yeah. Netherlands, yes. US and Canada, Canada, Russia, Russia US and Canada, China, China they yes. don't, don't have anything yes. to do with it. Yes, US and Canada are very much into this uh, GM uh, foods. Yes. And uh, as I said, it's, it's science. And we need to be very circumspect just to, say, uh, to just wash it away and say that because others are against it, then. We need to study it critically because I myself, in looking at it generally, I have some reservation. Mm -hmm. I have some reservation. But I'm saying that let's look at it critically. Let's look at the disadvantages and pick where the disadvantages are and leave the demerits. But if we want to say that because there are some disadvantages in the GM, for that matter, if we just throw it away, I have a difficulty with that one. But I'm saying, once we are looking at GM, in totality, there are a lot of things that we need to do to ensure that we are talking about, even in Africa here, if we introduce GM foods, is it that we are going to ensure that our institutions work? Because you know, in Ghana here, the institutions themselves have a problem. We talk about how we're going to ensure that we propose good laws so that the labeling becomes very important, so that anybody at all is going to purchase GM food should be aware that this is what I'm going to purchase. I think those are the issues we're talking about because is it well labeled? Are they lost to ensure? There's never that any law anywhere that yeah. says, you know, this contains GM food. It's mm. always food, and then you mm. just buy it and mm. take it home. But let me just uh, introduce our uh, guest on the phone, Professor Walter Sando. Uh, Prof, good evening. Well, there's a discussion on the table, and it is well within your jurisdiction, and it is genetically modified foods. Again. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some of us are worried, some of us are not. Should we be worried, Professor? Well, I don't see why. I don't see why you should be worried. If it's uh, uh, it's still on the food, because there's nothing wrong with the food. It's just so before any food product is released on the market or in eat a variety to a farmer to plant, the safety considerations have been cleared with the regulatory authority. Bro, before you even go further, that even makes me worry because the amount of medicines that have been taken off the shelf this week because somehow they slipped through the net and missed these safety regulations. So can you imagine all these foods? I mean, even this 
controlled you know medicines are able to slip through so if we're going to plant corn and cassava in that you know volume i mean they're all going to slip through the net won't they <laughs> no 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 we have a crop have you counted uh at your at your fingertips and it is not every crop that must be genetically modified usually when there's a challenge Mm -hmm. that the you know, conventional methods have not been able to solve the problem, then we look at uh, the genes uh, outside the population, the species, to see whether we can get the genes from elsewhere. We can do that. Pro then we move it on by uh, what we call the process of genetic engineering. But there are certain concerns that look at at every stage of the process. And if it's okay, it's passed by the regulatory uh, authorities. Now, if it's, uh, it's about food about food important. Again, um, for instance, if, if the food has been processed and is not to be planted, we're looking at the safety. If the particular food coming from a particular country is being consumed there, the chances are that the thing is not going to kill Ghanaians, but especially those people who are exporting the thing from a country where they are eating. If you import meat from South Africa, which is genetically modified, and about 80% of the meat there is genetically modified, they are eating it. What we say, you have to suspect that this worry thing can mean can save South Africa. They would have gone through the safety checks and the genetic toxicity and what have you before uh, it, 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 it is released. And even if they do that, there are a few exceptions, you know. Uh, not all of us can do the same thing without having some sort of quote unquote other effects. On even a new GM, there are some people who don't eat any food based product. That doesn't mean that we should ban the importation of it. That's in a minority. So those uh, differences exist, and they are thorough. Prof, let me come in here. Uh, maybe I can't speak for other countries, but uh, Brian made a very important point that here we are struggling with post-harvest losses in huge percentages, in almost all crops that are stuck in the farms getting rotten. And then on the other side, we say, you know what, let us produce more. Aren't we just going to increase post-harvest losses? Because indeed, we have enough food. The problem we have is transporting the food to the mouths. Well, <laughs> again, I'm glad you're asking issues like that. Those are not specific to GM. It's with, it's with, uh, that those are them in general, which we must, we must tackle it, whether you are dealing with, uh, with GM or, or non-GM. Even if we don't have GM product, farmers will still have bumper harvest, and we will we'll have to handle those things. Those are issues related post-harvest. There is a great agriculture policy. No, so it, it, constructed. I'm going to say that we should wait until we construct one before farmers will increase productivity. <laughs> Go on together, and government will, have to, will, will prioritize, make sure that uh, uh, the marketing system is looked at, uh, roads are better constructed, uh, warehousing facilities are provided. We, we, we can't wait until all these things are in place before we go back to start producing. No, pro what I mean. Pro so, pro um, Issues are not like that are general. We are talking about issues of the uh, biotechnology and GM. No, Prof, the question then is, uh, yeah. as, as, as a nation, it means that we don't need a GM as an excuse that, oh, we're going to increase foods because we don't need increase in foods. All we need is increase in access or bringing the foods in. Don't forget, don't forget that the GM is not only increasing the food, it's also reducing your production costs. And it's in your profit margin. Of course, this presupposes that you can dispose of the thing. Um, so, the GM is not just there to increase production per se. It's supposed to help you, yes, to, to increase production, but at a lower cost than what you are doing uh, presently under the, uh, the current uh, conventional practice. You oh. use less pesticides, for instance. You know, the environmental footprint is reduced. You are going to, you are going to reduce opening new lands because you have increased productivity. And that's why we talk about sustainable, uh, you know, uh, productivity. Hold on, let me bring Bright in here. Bright, it's to no, reduce right, costs. Right, so, right. oh, Bernard, I beg your pardon. Uh, uh, it's to reduce costs. Yeah. So then, why not? Well, reduced cost. I, I, well, I, I, we can debate it because um, what has been shown is that if you use, for example, um, uh, herbicide-resistant seeds in the first two years, maybe you can reduce cost. After a few years, the, the seeds develop a, a, a resistance against it. And then you have to use even more chemicals in order to control it. 
And from countries where they've done it for years, they've shown that, yes, there's that difficulty. So at the end of the day, that will really reduce costs. But in any case, assume that it reduces costs. But have we measured it against the cost of our health? Because it's going to affect our health in the long run. And we look at the cost of it, maybe even the, the, the cost benefit will get will be cancelled off maybe twice, ten times. You yes, please, Professor. <laughs> if it, if it, have you mentioned already, uh, the plus, plus, plus points for introduction of biotechnology and modern biotechnology and then, of course, GM. Mm -hmm. And also, let's not forget, biotechnology just doesn't mean GM. If it comes up with technologies with GM, yeah, so as one of them. But looking at the issues of GM, you are going to spread the crops less. So, uh, for the health, the pharma, uh, it is, uh, it's taking care of. Instead of spreading a crop six times, you are spreading two times. Instead of bringing your crop with fertilizers, you are going to use less fertilizer because the crop has been necessarily much better to use fertilizer more efficiently so you don't get a lot of runoff to pollute your, your groundwater. Now, if you also apply the, uh, the, the herbicide, you know, it then accept what we call zero change. You can plant, spray, plant, the weeds will die, your crop will grow, you don't have to use a tractor to uh, keep turning the soil. You may need to fix a large step of course. You may need to use a, a boom, you know, you put a, a, a chemical in the chemical to water and put it at the back of a tractor and it's long, we call it boom, so it can spray, you know, hundreds of uh, hectares. But otherwise, you may just use a knapsack sprayer, you know, I mean, it is very, very small. Prof, is it not so amazing? You can on top of it and reduce it with Prof, is it not? Uh, all these things. Again, we to have to uh, make sure that we have a, a more healthy environment. And of course, the farmers too, will they have to use uh, less, less uh, pesticides on the contract. Prof, so, so why then is that the jurisdictions who bring these GM foods have banned yeah. it? I mean, there are countries who don't want it anywhere near their country. If you... That's what I'm talking about. I'm I mean, talking about Europe. Yes, yes. The Europe, the, most of Europe, Russia, the Netherlands, yeah. the Russians. And India is banned. <laughs> Most of Europe cannot produce enough of the food that they eat. So they import. They import most of it. They cannot feed their livestock. For instance, they have to use soybean, soybean cake. And 80% uh, of the soybean in the world, it's run off already. Run already is a genetically modified uh, plant so that if you spray run off, the weeds will die and the plant will stand. But at so least the pollen is not flying about in their country. For them to feed their livestock. So pollen like the, the plant. They have money to buy. That's why they are doing this. But, but they, they, uh, they don't want to plant it for uh, bees to pollinate. Why are they using it for the products for their livestock? Prof, I come in again to say that why don't they, they have the land to plant it, but they don't want the pollination, so they've banned it. So you go and plant it in your country, you pollinate it, we'll buy the, you know, the scrap or whatever it is to feed our animals, but you know, they're not going to eat it. Very good. I'll get uh, Bernard, yeah. do you want to comment Yes, on that? Prof. Um, well, I want to, to, to debate that because um, genetically modified foods have not been proven in a very long term that it doesn't have an impact. Let's take the case, we can compare to this to the case of tobacco. When they started tobacco early in the tobacco, the, the, the argument was that it doesn't have any impact because the impact is very slow. It's not something that you eat and tomorrow you have it, a stomach ache. No. Today, Tobacco companies are being taken to court and they are being charged for damage they've done over the period. This is exactly what's going to be happen with genetically modified foods. Today it's safe because we can all eat it and you have a stomach ache. Give ourselves, maybe we might not be the people, but our grandchildren who would come are the people that will begin to show the signs of the effect, the impact of this genetically modified food, which is not sufficiently tested yet. 
and that is what we are afraid of. We need to test it. Europe is stopping it because they want to take precautionary me 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 measures to be sure that this is 100% safe in the next 100 years, and not just tomorrow. But as of now, we're only meeting the needs of, 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 of people, I mean, capitalist corporate organizations who are only looking at the profit they make out of it. They're not looking at how they feed people. They're not worried about the health of people in the long term. And this is what we are arguing against. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we are just progressing. This is the question. Every technology has got the risk that you have to grapple with. There's no single technology that hasn't got risk. But we bring down the risk to a manageable level. And you are speaking as if science is going to get static. Because early, at times, where some people are coming out with improved versions of the same technology, they are reducing the risk. Can you imagine? Uh, what the airplane was like. Those who take 15 years back, well, you know, and what it is today. So there are always problems with me arise with any technology they have been adapted, and any time they come out with improvements so that uh, the issues are minimized to terrible levels. So we have to look at the pros and cons. What do you get, what do you, what's the penalty, quote unquote penalty, for not using the technology at the time that it can solve a problem and that is your food security. People yeah, are yeah, dying, yeah. I'm going to say that they have to wait. Oh, yes. Because you are not sure what's going to happen. When you are sure that that's at now, there's no time to get this to feel that it is it's hazardous as at now. So you are saying 50 years. I don't you know that fertilizers we are putting on crops now are not going to endanger our life. For even non GM crops, fertilizers, the pesticides, the spring. Uh, how do you know that in 50 years' time there will not be residues uh, of this in our system? You know, our, 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 our children's children to come. I'm going to take a I'm going to take a break here and I'll come back to discuss. But when I come back, I'm going to Bright because Bright is a member of the Greg Select Committee in Parliament, and I want to find out from him if these big companies or big countries who have got the might and the wealth behind uh, healthcare are saying, "Hold on, let us wait." Why are we rushing in when you go to Kolebu today, you pay 50 cities, and then you jump ahead of the queue? When our healthcare is not that strong, why are we jumping into it? We'll find out as soon as we come from the break. Hello, welcome back. And the discussion is genetically modified food. And uh, with me in the studio, I'll introduce them again. Uh, my extreme left is uh, Bright Edward Kujo Dimwadi, who is an honorable member of parliament for Botiano English, a man from, and a member of the Greek Select Committee in parliament. And then with my immediate left is uh, Bernard Guri, executive director for Center, uh, Center for Indigenous Knowledge and Organizational Development. He's against GM food. Uh, on the phone, I hope he's still there, is Professor Walter Sando. He's a scientist and he's saying there is nothing wrong with GM foods. But before we went on the break, I said I was going to talk to Bright. And Bright, you are basically uh, saying, you know, you're making policies uh, with regards to agriculture. Ever since I started class one, the problems in agri has been storage, uh, uh, transportation, uh, access to capital for the farmer. It has never, ever been in terms of we can't produce enough food. So the whole idea of GM, as Professor is saying, is to reduce pesticide, bumper yields and everything, but that has never been our issue. Our issue is farmer bringing the tomato to the, uh, to the mouth, you know, to the kitchen. The yams come into the kitchen, the plantain come into the kitchen, and somehow to be able to give it a longer uh, shelf life. We've skipped all these things and we are going for boom, 
genetically modified seeds. Now, I know with my basic understanding is, once you come for my genetically modified seeds because it works for you, you stay with me. You can't just come and buy my seeds and copy it or go anywhere. You, you will start with it. So, in natural in 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 fact, I control what you eat. So, if you're in parliament and then you take a flexible position, then the mouths or the kitchens in the country have to be worried, thinking, hey, if you vote yes and pass this thing one day, we are doomed. <clears throat> we are not doomed. We are not doomed in a sense that, you see, we have gone beyond the traditional problem that we have. We are talking about climate change now. And we are talking about a weather situation changing such that we cannot even know, even in the north this year, we cannot even know when the rain will start and when the rain will end. That's how come scientific innovations are means of solving all these challenges. So the traditional problem that we are having in agriculture, we have moved beyond those problems. Are you sure? Yes. Capital in agriculture? No, I'm not saying that. We have Access, comp- storage, no, it's I, still the same. No, I'm not saying that there's additional problems. We're right. talking about drought. It's never we, been we an used issue. To, we it's used to have, in, in, in those days, when they say the rain starts from June, July. Mm-hmm. It is June, July. Everybody knows. But even this year in the north, there are a lot of places cannot... Even areas where they don't, in those days they don't apply fertilizers. These days, if you have to apply fertilizers before you can produce, okay. that's the bottom line. So, the, the, what I'm trying to say is that we are moving forward and there are difficulties in the system. Everybody's talking about climate change. What is the impact of the climate change? It's about a weather system which you cannot predict. But, but, but we need to predict. So, the point that we are making is that these GM foods. System is coming to solve. They are looking at certain problems and their challenges. And I'm saying that there is no scientific innovation without a risk. There are no scientific innovation in this world without risk. Even scientific innovations that bring serious remedies have some level of setbacks. They will tell you. Even medicines, even medicines, development of medicine. They will tell you that. These are some side effects. So going forward, what I think is that, fine, There's, there are some difficulties initial introduction of this GM foods. What I have is that the corporate entities that are controlling... Why are you skipping irrigation? But before you answer irrigation, let, let me go... Me, let, let me finish this I one. I wanted to get, finish off with Prof mm-hmm. on the phone, and I'll come back to you. Prof, are, are you still with me? Oh, I think I lost. I think I lost him. So is it, let's go for irrigation. Find out why you not doing. Are you taking a shortcut by even considering GM? No, 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 no. It's not a shortcut. You see, we are not living the other traditional ways of helping agriculture. We have, but we are saying that no, we, we are have. doing that. No, they are, no countries where they are GM food they, they, they doesn't mean that they are not producing other. You can see that, that even that they say organic foods, labeled organic foods. Mm-hmm. And then GM foods, yeah. Lab- labeled. You see them well labeled. That these are organic foods, and these are GM foods. They don't label GM, but they label organic. Oh, organic. So it tells uh-huh. you that there are differences. If you are going to buy, it's a, that's what I'm saying. That what we need to do is look at the institutions no, but, that are supposed. But to. organic food doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, GM or non-GM. It just means yes. that they've used organic minimal fertilizer. Be, uh, that's all. GM, yes. So if they say it's organic, yes. it has got yes. nothing to do with G- no. GM or not. No, but the yeah. level of no, if you look at. The, the labeling. We look at some food, GM food labeling. They, they, they state it. Labeling very, is very key. Very, very, very so what rarely. I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that we should look at our labeling laws. We should look at legislations that will promote private individuals, private research institutions to go and research and come up but with reports. My, my, Currently, my issue is yes. my issue is at the moment I have six bowls of kinky. Yes, right, and I've only got three children. Now, my kinky is in the bedroom, and I just need to go to the kitchen to give it to the kids. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, no, it's difficult. Let me just make more kinky. What am I saying? Are you very sure that our farmers are making the necessary profit that they are expected to make? What if, I'm saying is that too many farmers, foods are going rotten on the farm. If our farmers are making the necessary profit that we are making. How many silos do we have working at the moment? Honestly speaking, we cannot say that there are no problems in regard exactly. to infrastructure. Exactly. Nobody can run away with that fact. Mm-hmm. That there are difficulties in regard to infrastructure and agriculture sector. No two ways about that. We are also saying that you see the problems that GM is going to solve are not are quite different 
from we're talking about reduction in cost of production not necessarily in terms of output we do subsistence farming as a country yes. that's why we have about five million people on their farms everybody cultivating their one acre and that's how we survive we don't do mechanized farming where one person has ten thousand acres mm. so that's two acre what, how much cost yes. are you saving somebody who is cultivating yes. two acres mm. of cassava or plantain and that's how we have survived mm. since time mm. Mm. do you know that somebody with two acres has borrowed a, a small loan from a farm People are dying because yeah, they borrowed 100 cities, 200 cities. So how much yes. cost are you going to save them by GM? No, that cost may not be for you. It may not be huge, but for that ordinary yes, farm, for that him, for him, for I mean, that, how much is one, him? two, three, and seed? four? It is mm -hmm. the same system that we use to feed ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it would mean that if you if improve on the profit margin of every individual farmer, mm -hmm. and you multiply the number of farmers' profit margin, you you you. It will it, ripple some multiply effect. All that I'm saying, trying to say is that, mm -hmm. you see, there are some advantages of GM. Not to us. Not to us. <laughs> Why are you saying that? Because we do because, subsistence farming. Yes. Everybody's got one acre, two acre. Uh, you know, some has got five acres, and he's got like a big farm yes. because he's got if five acres. If you've got two acre, two acre, yeah. acres of farmland. And on the and, two acre, he's not even got one product. He's got like three products. And, and, and on, all together, they feed the whole nation. So I'm saying, yeah. all they need is the transportation and the road to bring that food to the kitchen. And he hasn't got it. What does he need in Bruce's for? Mm -hmm. No. One. To increase his profit margin. So you're just going to, going to sadden his plight because he no. can, still can't bring it. It can never be the case. It can never be the case. Let me tell you, if you go to an individual farmer and you, you, you tell him that if you are buying two bags of fertilizers or three bags of fertilizer in applying to your one acre farm, now with the GM food, they're going to apply only one bag or half bag. If you look at the difference in terms of cost to an ordinary farmer, it's a huge cost. It's going to reduce his level of cost of production. That's what we're talking about. So it is not as if there's no gain. But I'm saying that it, as a nation, we need to decide where we want to go. But for me, I know that scientific I'll bring, innovations... I'll bring Bright in here, but the no, farmer's no, plight is being... Bernard. Ber Bernard, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll bring Bernard in here, but the <laughs> farmer's plight is being to bring the food to your kitchen and not to increase his yield. So yes. I'll just bring... Yes. Are you Bernard sure of that? Uh, 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 can, I, can I come in okay. now? I think I'm um, listening to, to our MP. He's talking like the corporate capitalists. What do you think that food is all about? Profit. For our farmers... Production is not just for profit. Production is for feeding, it's also for social things. For example, if you take where I come from, Pito is a local beer which is brewed from, from a certain variety of sogo. Jimmy Carter introduced Naga White. That was a, a, a genetically modified seed that had a very big head, high yield, a very short stock. But that didn't last even two years because they couldn't breed Pito. And so that variety was abundant, although it had high yield. And so for me, and as my brother said here, the kind of farming system we have here is different from the farming system in America. Here we have, we have one acre, and we're able to produce all that we need. Not just maize, but also vegetables and, and herbs and everything on that plot. What we have in Africa is that we have a failed leadership with failed policies. Because we have to begin to take control of our own problem. We should look for solutions that address our African problems. We should kind of policies that support the conventional farming, which is not exhausted yet. Our farmers are scientists. And they've done science. They know how to manage their farms. There is a new science, the alternative science, we call ecological science, which is what Prof. Alassane and co. will not listen to. Genetic engineering is a modern science, which we don't need now. What we have is ecological science that's proven that for, uh, uh, the UN itself has done research to, in 400 scientists where they've come to prove that the only way to feed this world is through ecological science. It's through ecological farming, which is what our farmers are experts in. How to grow so many crops within one plot. And if you talk about production, the small farm in the one hectare is much more productive than the American in, in its 100 hectares of land. More productive in terms of the, the America might produce only maize. 30 seconds. But this farmer produces all the different varieties that he needs to feed the family. 
And so what our African leaders should be doing is to look at Africa, what are the solutions we have for our own Africa, how do we support those policies. And it's about agroecology. That is where our farmers are already experts. And that's where we should be going. Bernard, you know. 20 seconds. Right yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> frankly speaking, uh, science is very is, is good. Innovation is very important. But every innovation has some level of risk. We should be looking at how we can look at the risks and solve them rather than just throwing it away. I, I think that there is some level of uh, knowledge that we need to tap from GM, which is also key for our develop as a developing nation. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it was an interesting debate, and I get the names right this time. From the extreme left is uh, Bright Edward Kojo Jiboji, uh, who's a member of parliament for Botiano English, a man from, and a member of a Greek select committee in parliament. And then to my immediate left is Bernard Guri, executive director, Center for Indigenous Knowledge and Organizational Development. Uh, who uh, the professor joined us on the phone was Professor Walter Sander, who is a scientist and very clearly in support of GM Food. But before you sign out, uh, take your phones and vote for your favorite program because I know you tune in every time and watch PM Express, and it is RTP KWAW 1446, 1446, and vote and let us come and put this trophy on the table. My name is Nanan Sakwa, and as I say, tomorrow we'll be back to do it all over again. Thanks for tuning in.